In this episode of Filmstock Reviews, I'm reviewing episode 10 of the season 1 finale of House of the Dragon, titled The Black Queen. Now, after the events of episode 9, where we find out that King Viserys has died and Aegon takes the throne. Okay, so Rhaenys flies to Dragonstone and Princess... Rhaenyra is still, you know, trying to figure out what's going on, what's happening, and Rhaenys informs Rhaenyra that her father, Viserys, is dead. With all the shock and grief, uh, Rhaenyra goes into premature labor and gives birth to a stillborn. This show with giving birth and people giving, women giving birth is really, really eye-opening and in your face it's just the context of how it's done and everything and the emotional distress that women go through in this show is absolutely mind-blowing so while that's happening Damon kind of prepares for war and wants to fight you know for the right for Rhaenyra and it's really really interesting and Sir Eric gives Rhaenyra her father's crown and she is crowned queen so now she is queen this entire aspect of the whole Civil War thing is happening and it's really, really interesting. Now we see Otto come with his men and troops and in a way kind of offers peace terms where Queen Alicent wants Rhaenyra to surrender. Of course, it's Rhaenyra and she's not going to surrender, but Damon's like, no, let's cut off Otto's head and send it back and, you know, let's see what happens. In an interesting turn, while Damon and Rhaenyra is, are talking, Damon chokes Rhaenyra and tries to understand what the aspect is. Like, do you want war? Do you want peace? You know, it's really, really in-your-face sort of scene, and it's really done well. The whole aspect of the backdrop and everything is just mind-blowing. And I didn't think Damon would stoop so low, but listen, hey, he would do anything to help his family. And you saw it when it was announced that his brother passed away. The shock on his face was, okay, all right, um, I believe he was murdered and not just, you know, dying like that. So Princess Rhaenys, basically, we see that the Lord Corlins is getting better from his wounds and he wasn't around for a few episodes. So she basically tells her husband, pledge your allegiance to Rhaenyra and see what happens. So Corlys goes in and says, you have my support with the fleet and my men and everything and I will back you. And Rhaenyra is absolutely loving it. And, you know, you can see in her face that she's really happy that she has support. Not only that, she needs support from other aspects of people around in where they are. And Stark is mentioned. Baratheon is mentioned. If you know these names, you've seen Game of Thrones, you know the whole story. And it's really interesting how these little Easter eggs were thrown in there for characters like this. Because we know these characters and we know they ascend the throne. 200 some years later in the Game of Thrones show. So while that's happening, Damon starts singing and goes into a cave and he awakens the dragon Vermithor, who is a big, just brute of a dragon. It's just interesting. Like this show is called House of the Dragon. These people have dragons and it's front and center in this episode. And it's really, really interesting to see, especially the designs of the dragons. I mean, it's just absolutely mind blowing and really, really well done. So Lucerne goes in the order of his mother's wishes to Storm's End to kind of get Baratheon on, his, on their side, but he refuses to join Rhaenyra and Aemond is there, but beats him to the punch and says, you know, I want for what you did to my eye, I want your eye. And Baratheon's like, not under my house, not under my roof. I don't want any bloodshed. So they leave and Lucerne gets on his dragon and starts flying off. And now we have a battle between Lucerne and Aemond. So all the while, while Lucerne is on his dragon, Arax, Aemond and his dragon kill Lucerne and Arax. And to the shock of Aemond, he can't believe it. It's like, oh, this guy is doing all this stupid bullshit and then this is what happens. And it's absolutely crazy to see the look on his face. The next scene, Damon comes in and tells Rhaenyra about what happened. She's just devastated, but she's enraged with anger. And if she didn't want a war, she'll get one now. The interesting thing is that's how this season ends, with a still shot of her face being angry and it just fades to black. 
this entire season of House of the Dragon was a big up and down. So many years have passed between certain, you know, episodes close to, I want to say, 30 years maybe. And it was good. Some episodes were good. Some episodes weren't too good. I believe my favorite episode is the Lords of the Tide episode, which was episode 8 and episode 9, the Green Council, just to see how everything happened. Uh, once everything tried to start to get going, it was good. Episodes 1 through 4, I want to say, were good. And then when we saw the older versions of these characters, like Allison and Rhaenyra being older, it got really, really good. You see the tension and everything. Matt Smith is great as Damon. Patty Considine is very, very underrated as Viserys. And the entire cast is great. Olivia Cook as Alison Hightower is immensely, immensely fantastic. And Emma Darcy as Rhaenyra Targaryen. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm curious to see where this show goes. It has been renewed for a second season. My thing is, what are they going to do with it and where can they go with it? Now, it's been said that there's been rumors that it'll be four seasons, ten episodes each, to tell the entire story of what's happening with this. The criticism that I have with it is the aspect of the time jumps. You have to tell us and let us know what's happening with the time jumps and how long it's been. Not only that, the lighting in some scenes were so, so dark. The aspect of how that's done is that scenes are shot in the daytime and they're brightness is brought down tremendously in post-production and in editing to get that dark look and effect. Other than those two criticisms with the time jumps and the lighting, this was a good show. The pacing was great. Uh, is it better than Game of Thrones? Not quite. Game of Thrones is still slightly better, but I have to, we have to see, as fans of this entire franchise, where the story goes from here. Now, Rhaenyra is upset and, you know, just angered and enraged and devastated about what happened to her son. What happens now? Where are we going to go from here? And what other characters and actors will come into these seasons? And we'll see how long these seasons are. For me, season one of House of the Dragon gets four out of five stars. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about episode 10, the season one finale of House of the Dragon titled The Black Queen. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think of it? Also, let me know what did you think of this entire first season as a whole? What was your favorite episode? What was your least favorite episode? What was your favorite thing about the show? And what was your least favorite thing about the show? Who was your favorite character? Who was your least favorite character? And who was your... And what is the entirety of this show? Do you think that it's better than Game of Thrones? Or is Game of Thrones slightly better? And also, let me know what rating you would give this first season of House of the Dragon. And also, let me know how many seasons do you think this will have. Let me know in the comment section below about all the questions I just asked. And I'll see you all in the next review video. And I want to thank you for tuning into my weekly review of Season 1 of House of the Dragon. And I'll see you all for Season 2.